Welcome to this uh, edition of Chat with Chair. Uh, we are actually focusing on a very important segment of the Indian economy, and we have the president of the FICI CMSME, uh, Mr. R. Narayan, who is also the founder and chief executive officer of Power2 SME uh, with us today. He's actually a cost accountant by training, uh, sales and marketing professional by choice, and an entrepreneur by passion. He has over 26 years of general management and sales marketing experience. Uh, he has been an entrepreneur for the last 19 years. He worked in his uh, career. He started with uh, different organizations as Microsoft, Oracle, and Tata's. Uh, after working closely with the SME segment for more than a decade, uh, he actually looked at uh, there is a substantial difference in the procurement uh, pricing for large enterprises as compared to SMEs. Then he co-founded uh, Denave India Private Limited, India's largest uh, technology-powered sales-enabling service, uh, where he continues to be a board member. Uh, he has been uh, spearheading the growth uh, of Denave over the last 13 years. Uh, before he led uh, the foundation for the Power2 SME, the first buying club for small and medium enterprises in India. Under his stewardship, uh, Power2 SME enjoys a position of prominence in the sector in which it operates. He's, of course, responsible for the overall profitability and performance of the organization and has an impressed track record of developing robust uh, business strategies and taking the company to new heights. Of course, he's won many awards and laurels uh, in, uh, and he's been widely acclaimed for his contribution to the SME sector. Recently declared the Entrepreneur of the Year, uh, Narayan is recognized through thought leader across, the, uh, across policy, SME, and the entrepreneurial platforms. I think uh, more importantly, Power to SME was uh, awarded the Forbes India Leadership Award for Outstanding Startup in 2018 uh, under his uh, stewardship. So a passionate person about the small and medium enterprises and currently also leading the FIKI CMSME group. So very warm welcome to you, uh, Mr. Narayan. It's always a pleasure to talk with you and to interact with you and really to you know, set the ball rolling. Uh, I think uh, it might be very interesting uh, for our viewers uh, to get a sense of the impact of both the first and second wave uh, of the COVID-19 pandemic on the MSMEs operating uh, in the country and their sustainability and future. So sure, thank you for that. Uh, uh, I mean, just like the rest of the world, you know, Indian economy is also driven by the MSME sector. So uh, to give you a few statistics there, if you look at the uh, developed countries, typically, you will see that the MSME sector almost contributes anything between 65 to uh, 72, 73% of the GDP of the country. Uh, when we started CMSME uh, in uh, six years back, uh, the MSME contribution to the Indian GDP was roughly around 16 to 18%. And I'm proud to you know, acknowledge the fact that that's kind of grown to around 29%. Uh, and the government's ambition is to you know, try and uh, grow that to around 50%. So uh, defragmentation of the economy for it to stand in proper legs is very, very important. And therefore, the importance of MSME. Uh, and we take a leaf out of, you know, all developed countries, we know that this is extremely important, right? Currently, India has more than 600 lakh MSMEs employing more than 1,100 lakh people. And uh, the contribution, like I said, is 29% uh, to the GDP. And for exports, it's around 49%. Okay. Now, um, what has uh, happened with the COVID outbreak is that the suddenness of both the phase one and phase two, if I may call that, uh, of the COVID, uh, has hit everybody by a lot of surprise. You know? And to, if I look at uh, MSMEs as a pyramid, I would think like, you know, uh, the bottom 30% of the MSMEs are virtually, if not already wiped out. But, the, you know, these are actually more of the micros. So the effect on the economy of the MSME per se should not be, gonna will be in low single digits. So there is scope for it to revive and grow, etc. Uh, I mean, uh, 
you know even when the opening up was uh, stated you know uh, while large corporates and large manufacturing companies could adhere to the covid compliances like social distancing and availability of sanitizers msmes were very very wary of opening up because you know they were very uh, worried about the covid compliances etc so they face significant challenges and then you know uh, what a lot of them realized is that 50% of their workforce 60% of their workforce suddenly went missing they all gone back to their lo- uh, local areas where they were and they were having problems in finding that also so uh, in effect you know uh, the shutting down was sudden opening up was very very gradual and that is just to say, talk about the physical aspects of the you know uh, covid lockdown etc but the bigger thing that happened is you know the cash flows kind of just froze and that cash flow freezing caused a lot of uh, pain and in both the first uh, wave as well as the second wave what we have seen is that it is taking anything between a month to 3 months at least after opening a factory for them to get to 65 70% production levels and for their cash flows to get into a flow i'm not saying they are out of it but they're still you know getting into a flow is taking that kind of time so yeah it's been very very tough on the msmes it's quite interesting you talked about the pyramid of the msmes and you know uh what is there but giving that pyramid and looking at you know a lot of it is at the central government a lot of it is the state government you know uh recently of course the uh, standing committee also discussed the uh response uh, of the to the msme sector so you know uh, what has happened so far and what more could be done okay so uh this is not a small subject to talk about so we've done so much you know as a country for the msme sector and i'm happy to see that you know we've done so much and you know as a country the government has been so responsive that you know there are multiple things i can talk about in terms of policy schemes incentives compliances these are the key growths of the msme development the government of india came out with a lot of announcements on this uh, front they've done significant work towards uh, you know providing liquidity to msmes by starting uh, schemes like the eclgs the subordinate debt scheme and the fund of funds etc some of them is fully operational and being utilized well and some of them we'd like more teeth in what they are doing and i'll talk about that also shortly the uh, the government of, uh, initially opened the eclgs scheme for 3 lakh crores and uh, what we have seen is that you know close to around 2.63 half that has been sanctioned and almost 2.13 has been already uh, subsumed by the msme so uh, very good numbers there and what we did is you know we went and appealed to the government to the policy makers saying that you know uh, two things need to be done to this e, uh, eclgs scheme uh, one is that the corpus needs to be increased and you know uh, it fell on uh, supporting years and we are happy to announce that you know the government actually increased that by 1.5 lakh crores and also the second thing we had asked them is to uh, you know increase the du- duration of the course so that has been increased till december 31 so this has been you know this is actually being subsumed by the smes and we getting very good feedback there i mean though the process of lending has uh, could have been better but uh, it's eventually reaching the recipients so that's been uh, helpful in you know getting the cash flows of the msmes running um, the distress assist funds which was created in may 2020 under the atmanirbhar package to provide credit facilities to lending institution to the promoters of stressed msmes you know uh, that was to remain in operation until march 31st earlier this year the government also extended that by another 6 months uh, you know um, so around uh, 20000 crore subordinate debt fund was announced so the government has been doing a lot uh, you know uh, then there is of course another ambitious uh, scheme called fund of funds uh, you know um, this uh, we'd like to see some more teeth there in the sense that you know we'd like to uh, we we are we're actually writing a policy paper to the government uh, to the policy makers saying that you know if a part of these uh, fund can be kind of managed only for um, uh, manufacturing companies and especially msmes under the uh, 250 crore mark then uh, you know what we are proposing is that that will be called the manufacturing development kind of fund and the government can you know uh, go lend to uh, existing manufacturers new manufacturers and help them set up capacity building is very important in this country when everybody is looking at this as a second manufacturing hub in the world uh, you know we we're thinking in terms of you know proposing that as a quasi equity quasi uh, debt kind of a fund you know so that in 10 years 15 years the government has a set of mini ratnas in terms of you know uh, manufacturing concerns and they're holding considerable stake 
which can be then divested by the government to raise much more funds themselves. I mean, I'm talking to you about the uh, this on the background of you know the IPO of Zomato, etc., which did so well. But as uh, you know, as a government, uh, I mean, while providing a great infrastructure and everything for this company, the government themselves did not make anything. But if we do this uh, manufacturing development fund, then there are two things that happens: is that the manufacturing capacity in India kind of goes up, and uh, people in the uh, right spaces are getting funding, and you know, part of it, the quasi is uh, debt, and the rest of it becomes equity. So they're not worried about returning it, also. Uh, so, so yeah, we uh, we're talking about that. We're very happy to you know say that you know we had proposed that the treads platform you be used very very aggressively, and you know. Uh, if it could be made that GST bills would be from the GST platform could get automatically posted on the Threads platform so that, uh, you know, the working capital choke that the MSME or this country faces can be you know, resolved very, very quickly. Because the dichotomy is that, you know, on one side, you have banks sitting flush with funds, not, uh, not being able to deploy it. And the other side, you have a working capital gap, which uh, the MSMEs are reeling under. So the trends would have been an ideal platform and we are happy to say that, you know, uh, our proposal there was considered and, you know, to start with the PSUs were bought under the ambit. I'm still not happy with the amount of discounting that's happening there, but it's definitely a, a start that's happened. And I would hope that all corporates and other people also follow in that same scheme. So I'm just going to take you back uh, to, uh, you know, a, a different uh, kind of a topic. And since you do uh, kind of, you know, uh, concerted buying, et cetera, for the MSMEs. One of the issues that uh, a lot of people are talking about, and, you know, at least for dispel this myth amongst our viewers, they're saying that MSMEs don't have scale and therefore cannot be competitive. You know, is that really true? Is it the universal truth? Or there are many good uh, MSMEs who are really competitive? And then, you know, what are the other things that the government could do to make the MSMEs competitive? So, you know, I spoke about the pyramid and how vulnerable the bottom of the pyramid is. Now, if I refocus and talk to you about the top of the pyramid, you know, uh, there you'll find a bunch of companies which, you know, started as small manufacturing units with one manufacturing uh, facility, etc. And over the last couple of decades have actually grown to four or five manufacturing uh, units. And uh, especially in the larger areas, people who are supplying to OEMs or to the tier one of the OEMs, you find a lot of MSMEs that have actually grown and broken the shackles. So if you lead by those examples, and there are tons of them, there is lots of rooms of growth. When we talk about MSMEs, you know, I like to talk about MSMEs and I put them in two groups. Uh, the first group, which is well, the group which had ambition to do something, whether in technology or in manufacturing, and, you know, do it and always dream, dreamt of making it big and uh, taking it to scale. The other set of MSMEs are actually self-appointed self entrepreneurs who would not be eligible for jobs because either of their education or other skills, but actually got their skills together. And they scale their organizations to a level where there is food on the table and probably four wheels in the family. And once they get to that level, they look at that level as stability. And then they kind of lose the risk appetite that uh, you know uh, would fuel them further. And they, uh, you know, want to remain consistent at that level, not increase their debt, not increase their exposure, etc., but make sure they are building something that will, you know, last them a lifetime. And so uh, if you look at the aspirational ambitions of these two sets of MSMEs, the first set of MSMEs are scaling. They are hitting the 250 marks, the 500 marks, etc. And there are plenty of examples of that. But the second set, I guess, is the same in any other economy will look to, you know, self-sustain themselves. And it's probably the next generation that caused them, for, uh, caused them to take the bold steps of expansion or diversifying, etc. So we are some way away from that, except from the top of the pyramid. If you were to really look at this sector and those that have, you know, those who are ambitious and growing, that's one. But the people who you know, are not that ambitious, who are satisfied with a you know, uh, set of four, you know, four wheels and uh, you know, food on the, the table... Track. And a floor under their feet, if I were to just uh, put it differently. Uh, what is your message to them? Why, you know, how should they think about their future and why should they be ambitious? What's the, you know, what's the message to them uh, that, uh, you know, they should look at it differently? So, you know, um, the, the most important thing for them is uh, successful case studies and especially successful case studies from uh, their own industry. So let me look at a small guy who's making nuts and bolts. 
and you know uh, talk to uh, you know expose them to you know one of the larger makers of nuts and bolts who have scaled their businesses to 3 500 crores etc and the starting point for both these businesses were the same so it is just that the end game all, the, all these guys uh, all this uh, you know all the, the end game that the first set of guys who are restricting themselves know is what they can see in front of them if we give them that exposure that know there is a far bigger field and you know just in nuts and bolts you can grow to 300 crores and 500 crores and here are two examples who have done it and how they did it and some exposure to their promoters and two you know in terms of nuts and bolts it does not mean the end of your life is nuts and bolts you know today you can get into fabrication you can do a whole thing there is things like manufacturing as a service that's really booming suddenly all of a center all of a sudden so to give them that exposure and rekindle the growth and you know tell them that what you've done is going to remain with you but increment small incremental steps in terms of risk taking is very important because it is that same risk taking that got you to this position and so don't you know now try to do this yourself just push yourself forward and then i'm sure in in a bunch of you know 100 we'll find 15 of them or 20 of them who are who are willing to put aside a part of their uh, capital and say that okay let's go for it and then the growth and you know the herd mentality will start so in okla for example if three guys start diversifying or three does guys increase their capacity you will realize that suddenly in the next two years five guys more have started doing that and that happens collective ambition if i may call it okay uh, so you know just to say you talked about what the government had done and you know some of the things that you were actually promoting but what are the other expectations from the msme sector uh, not only restore their uh, operations but also to achieve growth what are they looking for one of the most important things i mean and this is common to across the economy in india is that you know uh, ease of doing business right i mean that has to be uh, kind of uh, done uh, and looked at with a magnifying glass and see that you know it's not about just jumping five points on the rating scale etc or becoming on the ranking scale etc but actually you know seeing what is it that we can do to you know make things uh, really attractive to start manufacturing to be in the msme segment and grow in the msme segment is is very very important so uh, what are the other expectations now the biggest uh, you know uh, ex- expectation of course is you know easy access to raw material so you know nsic has done that we've been trying to do that a bunch of companies are trying to do that but you know uh, easy access to the raw material especially during the covid times when uh, you know the supply chain has been severely impacted and you know uh, what we are seeing in the business is that one is becoming tough to get your hands on a vendor who has the right stocks and the right price for you two even after getting that uh, getting the transportation done has been you know it's been lying there in the suppliers go down for three weeks four weeks trying to get it shipped etc and then the cost of shipping etc all of that has kind of severely gone through the roof and you know a lot of inflation has happened in the prices of raw materials so anything we can do to ease access to raw materials is extremely important the second thing you know easy access to overseas market because when the going gets tough the tough get going a lot of msmes have you know uh, survived on the domestic market but in this period of time have actually approached uh, us as a as a help to look at uh, you know overseas market and in this uh, what we've done is we've kind of tied up with ba uh, the buyers association and what we're doing is we giving uh, for, uh, a laser sharp focus on geographies and talking to msmes who are kind of you know uh looking at these areas and exposing them and exposing them then to buyers etc so if we can uh, make uh, easy access to overseas market that's that's going to be very helpful for these people to really scale i mean and i would say when i'm talking about scale if they were 100 pre covid this should help them to get to around 200 250 post covid and that's the kind of uh, target that we need to set to our, set ourselves the third thing is you know um the uh, easy access to finance i mean that's going to be very important and you know i, I would uh, look at that from two three aspects you know one is the working capital needs of a uh, msme as he grows is extremely important we have the necessary infrastructure in place with the uh, you know the portals of gst and the trades as i mentioned earlier and i keep talking about it if we can give teeth there like uh, you know at one point of time the government made an announcement that you know all companies beyond 500 crores mandatorily have to get registered there but what we see is that uh, even after companies get registered two things happen uh, one is their msmes are not able to present their invoice because one is the 
that's one of the preconditions that you know corporates work with MSMEs, and the MSME can't complain because he works with one or two corporates and he can't afford to lose any customers. So if, if we can, you know, uh, automate that whole process. And the second thing, what I'm realizing is that the uh, invoice acceptance on this portal is also an issue. So if we can make things like, you know, uh, in seven days and uh, invoice is automatically deemed as accepted unless it's specifically rejected by corporate, then the entire money flow into the system, into the manufacturing and the trading system becomes completely automated. And that will kind of, you know, ease up and give us a huge boost. Uh, in the economy. Then, of course, like I talk, spoke to you about earlier about the implementation of fund of fund schemes, if we can, you know, use it to uh, provide equity to the MSMEs in a, in such a way that, you know, the government, may, um, one, recovers their debt for sure, even if they have to write out something. But then uh, the government has also an opportunity to go and get a 10x on the equity conversions of their part so that this 50,000 uh, 50, uh, crores is not just a debt, but a debt and equity and the debt they realize whatever they want to realize in terms of their, you know, appetite. But the equity booster gives the government a 10x return on whatever 20% of this 50,000 crores that the government can put in equities. That's something that if we can first uh, look at will really help the MSME sector. And, you know, if the government, if you look at the entire financing ecosystem, you'll realize that the venture capitalists and all the other people are uh, investing in the tech play and other plays that are there. Uh, manufacturing is not really attractive except for a few people. If the government starts doing this, I'm sure other people will also look at it as a lucrative segment and, you know, the funds will start flowing even here. Then, you know, if we can do things like wiping out the bursting guarantee requirement, uh, you know, because when an MSME puts, lays the first brick of his factory in, uh, on the ground, he's actually completely committed to us, whether it's his house, it's car or everything, everything is committed. On top of that, taking personal guarantees and making feel insecure while working on a you know, capacity building for the country is not a good ask. And I feel, you know, personal guarantees, uh, we need to look at it as to whether we need to keep the MSME under constant pressure with that. Uh, the third thing is that, you know, uh, loan application seems to have eased up in this country quite a bit. So a lot of lo loan applications are going. But, you know, if we can have a tracking mechanism about what happens to, to a loan, give it a unique ID number and see what happened and why it was rejected. And some audit parameters in terms of, you know, if the rejection is correct or was it done in time, etc. Because when an MSME is putting uh, a factory on the ground, everything is, you know, time and things have need to happen properly. So something that he needs today gets granted to him after six months, you know, makes him almost write off the project. So, you know, if you can put in a system for tracking of Roma applications and, you know, uh, Grivan's redressal on that and, you know, uh, the restructuring scheme that's been given to MSME. Uh, by Sybil and all other people, restructuring is looked at as a bad, a bad word. And, you know, that hurts the MSME's credibility and his credit profile. So if, since you're officially allowing restructuring, so make that a good word instead of a bad word and not let that be a blip on the MSME's uh, credit history, that would help. Then, of course, you know, uh, things like power tariff. Uh, the power tariff across the country is all different. So if all things put together, the uh, cost price of the final produce of the MSME's in the Various states are, uh, you know, have different prices because of uh, high tariffs and low tariffs, etc. So if we can look at one country, one power tariff, that will kind of help boost the MSME in their production capacity quite a bit. Of course, the e uh, you know, easing in the norms for MSMEs in public procurement by state uh, governments. This has been an ongoing thing that's been, uh, you know, happening, but we'd like to see much more teeth there. Uh, and, you know, MSMEs getting treated as equals there. Uh, and next is, you know, digital contracts and its enforcement, support, support for environmental infrastructure. That's quite a fascinating list. But if I were to look at uh, what would, uh, you know, how do you see the uh, FICI, CMSME, actually helping the MSMEs in the next uh, two or three years? What are your top two or three priorities? How do you see that happening? I mean, it's okay. So, I mean, we've got our agenda fairly laid out. Uh, you know, one is, you know, the, the business environment is changing so fast that you to keep the MSMEs abreast of what the changes are and what it means for them. So providing business intelligence is one of the things that we are doing. So, for example, over the past couple of months, we've really been helping MSMEs and teaching them how to maintain their credit uh, ratings and how to, you know, not do sm uh, small things which end, end up hurting them hard. Uh, we're doing things like new market access. We've already opened up three, four geographies for the MSMEs that are our members. You know, we've introduced them through BAA in a partnership to various countries and to various products. 
uh, be doing the relevant networking and you know making sure that you know uh, Tiki has a pool of information in terms of network, which uh, which will be useful for these MSMEs to connect. We've launched a portal for them to you know uh, be connected together. Uh, so this is one of the key things: the constant flow of relevant information. You know, so we've been kind of you know, on almost on a daily basis flooding them with information on what is happening there, which includes you know at one end. Uh, what kind of tenders are coming out, etc. Government changes, policies, and all of that information, and you know that's been helping them. Uh, I mean, if I look at the amount of interaction that happens with our MSMEs today, uh, based on this constant flow of uh, relevant information, we know that we are doing a good thing. And for like, for example, one of the key things we are talking, uh, we're doing is we are a listening post for our MSMEs, and you know we are uh, talking to them about all the regulatory bottlenecks that they're uh, facing. What are policy changes that they are talking about? We are trying to put that all together, and we are constantly updating the policymakers about what can be done. We are happy that over the last couple of years, many of our changes have been accepted, either in part or full, and we continue to be a, have a pipeline of what the MSME needs to the policymakers. And you know, uh, so what we have done is we have created five subgroups: finance, ease of doing business, manufacturing services, exports, etc., uh, for you know, deliberate on issues and providing suggestions for providing. Support of these MSMEs and these subgroups are meeting once in a fortnight and are constantly doing the backflow of information back to the policymakers. So yeah, we're pretty focused and we have a two-year, three-year agenda to make a difference. And hopefully, when we talk to you again in two years' time, I'll be talking about MSMEs' contribution to the GDP being 50% from 29 that it is today. So yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Nayan, for that uh, you know very fascinating expose on the MSMEs, uh, how COVID has impacted them. The, you know the nature of the government response, and especially you know calling out the ECLGS scheme, uh, recognizing that the government expanded it, but also and talking about what are one or two things that we could actually do, and of course the whole uh, you know uh, competitiveness, credit, uh, other issues that you actually raise, the whole challenge about sourcing. I think that's a very sourcing and markets which you talked about. And of course, the huge uh, long list and let it run for some time because, you know, what are the expectations of the MSMEs, you know, from um, not only for restoring their operations, but going forward. And, you know, nicely wrapping it up with by saying, you know, what Fiki CMSME will be doing and how we, you know, if I could just take a pun on your organization, how we plan to, you know, power or empower the SMEs uh, under the Fiki CMSME going forward. So thank you very much uh, for your time and look forward to your continuing leadership in this very important uh, area. And I would encourage all the MSMEs looking at this or listening to this to reach out to you to see how we can actually help them going forward. So thank you once again.